There we go. Hi everyone, how are you guys tonight? You guys, we are live tonight in my bathroom. This is my bathroom. Usually we're out in my paint workshop and tonight we're inside my house. I feel like I'm really far away from the camera. You're not. Really well, you kind of are, I guess. I feel really far away. <laughs> Hello. You're just really out. Of, you're really out of touch. There may be an echo in here tonight because I'm in the bathroom. So um, I just want to catch you from the shoulders up, like you're doing duty or something. <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> so this may be the only time you guys get to hang out in the bathroom with uh, me and John. Oh no. <laughs> We're to that point in our marriage after 20 years. Um, so you guys, actually, we are working on this bathroom. So if you guys follow me on my pages, you guys know we built our house and we've lived here for about two and a half years, but we moved in when our house was just a shell. It was just drywall. And I'm not kidding you guys. We had no cabinets, no sinks, no light fixtures, no paint on the walls. It was just drywall, just a shell. So our house is 3,500 square feet and Sean has laid every inch of tile in this entire house. I'm talking all of our floors, except for the bedrooms are tile. Um, all of our bathrooms, which is three, there's one upstairs, but uh, we're not even talking about that one yet. Oh, I don't think the county knows about that one. <laughs> it's still tucked in the wall, actually, <laughs> the bathroom is. So, uh, so right now we have three, and this was our last bathroom that we hadn't fully completed, and it's our kids' bathroom. Um, so Sean just finished all this tile work here. You know? I'm kind of thinking maybe I don't want to zoom in. Maybe I should pull back just because I did all this tile work. <laughs> Uncomfortable? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you should. I think you should show your tile work. So Sean always talks about not being artistic, uh, you know, because he doesn't paint. But he's artistic in a totally different way than I am, and he's very technical. Um, and so this is the tile work that he's done in here is incredible. It's a lot of detail work. Oh, I, think really, I really think you should pull back and show him the tile work. So yep, maybe later on. So we're finished with the tile work in here, which also means we have finally ordered the shower glass for in here. And I want to repaint the room. I want to redo it. Um, I showed you guys a photo of what it looked like before on my Facebook page earlier today. I actually had transfers on the walls, which were really cute. They're birds. And then because this was unfinished, I hung a shower curtain here and it's been hidden for two years. No, <laughs> just was like that. Yeah, you know, we just used <laughs> Do our, not open this door, we caution just used tape. Our other showers and it was like, you don't know what's behind the curtain. Is there a shower or isn't there a shower? Um, so now that we have shower glass ordered, uh, the shower curtain uh, that matched the transfers on my wall is coming down, which means I want to take the transfers off. So I want to show you guys first how to take a transfer off the wall. Sarah says I should make a video on how to tile Prob or teach everybody how to tile. Problem is, is I'm still learning too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have one video uh, on my YouTube channel of doing our fireplace surround. He, it was a stone tile, but it was a similar process where he cut all the stone. It's a lot of cutting. And I always get nervous if I show you guys Sean cutting tile on camera, like his fingers get within like centimeters of that saw blade. That's why I have piano hands. Yeah, so Sean looks Just like so this. You know. He's like, hey guys, what's up? I should actually have an extra knuckle. So I'm always nervous if I show you guys what he does that you're gonna be like, ah, safety first, he's not wearing goggles. Oh, you know, I have an violations. Yeah, there's walking. all kinds of violations going on, but um, I, he does it all the time. Anyway. I can't even watch it. Uh, I, I should have. I actually took photos of all the way through of him doing the bathroom, but it took, he's been working on this for months. It would be after work, you know, cut some tile. After work, put, let's, let's be put some grout in. I gotta be honest. It hasn't <laughs> it's been not months. months. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you guys how to take a transfer off the wall. And that way, I, what I want to show, why I want to show you guys that is because they're actually pretty easy to get off. And then you could feel more comfortable putting transfers on your wall. And then if you want to change your decor out, like I'm changing mine, you can change them fairly easily. So these have been on for a couple of years. And I'm going to bring you guys up here. We're going to take this transfer off my wall. Oh, you mean I'm going to bring them up there? Yeah. Okay. So, so right. So uh, this is the wall here. Can, uh, I don't, huh? can, can you? Huh? I don't know how much you can see. Can you see like this whole area? You want me to get you in there too? Well, I'm I mean, just kidding. I'm only kidding. Okay, so, so I had transfers. If you looked at my photo, it was kind of all in this area. They went up here. Um, and, and I left one on here just so I could show you guys the process of removing it. But I had these birds and there were some branches um, coming off of here. Here, one second. I'm going to pause this one. Well, the video is still going to go. 
I'm just going to kind of move for better Hang on, let's, angle. Sean, let's Sean readjust the cameras, you guys. We are in a really small room tonight, so it's kind of a challenge. Do, 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 you guys are going up on the bathroom counter. Well, except for Instagram. Yeah, Instagram, I don't know what you guys are looking at right now. You'd probably be frightened. Give us one second, we'll catch you guys all up so everybody has the same view. Okay, I'm going to get you there. I can go up higher. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so this is the transfer that I'm going to take off. So the, the, the couple tools that I have is I have a, a piece of steel wool. I'm using Goo Gone, which is this spray here. They can see. They can see. Okay. Yeah. Um, mineral spirits would also work, but this was in a spray bottle, so it was much easier to bring inside, but you could definitely use mineral spirits for this. So the first thing I did is I kind of scored my transfer a little bit, just kind of rubbed over it with my uh, steel wool just to kind of scratch at the surface of it. I also have out my heat gun. Transfers are adhesive, so to make your uh, transfer soft, you want to use your heat gun. I had a... Um, Oh, come on now. I had a scraper in here. Did you take it uh, out? No. No, okay. No. I'll use, I'll use this stir stick. It okay. was a safety violation. I had a little plastic scraper in here, but I'm going to use this uh, paint stick just for now, and I'm going to heat this transfer lightly with my heat gun. When you're doing this, you don't want to overheat it because you can cause your paint on the wall to bubble. So just make sure that you're moving your heat gun and don't overheat it. It's just a minute that it takes. You can kind of feel... But, but I use the scraper so that I can kind of tell when the transfer gets softened. Sorry, I can't zoom in there, guys. Nobody's asking, but I'm just letting you know. Okay, so by, by kind of rubbing at this, I can tell that my transfer has softened. And already, I was able to take most of it off my wall. But now I'm going to come back with my Goo Gone, which is the spray, and I'm going to give it a spray. And I'm just going to rub it with my steel wool. If I need to, if I'm having a hard time getting it with the steel wool, I'll come back and I'll just give it another little blow with the heat gun because it's cooled off. Keep it moving. Don't let it overheat. Don't bubble your paint. Uh, my walls are a, um, they're an imperfect smooth texture, so they're not a full textured wall. It's a lightly textured wall. Uh, not a full like orange peel texture. Okay, so now it's just got a mark. That's just from the steel wool. But now I can take a rag. Is that a rag? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna use. I'm gonna put some cleaner on my. Well, here I'll just use these really quick. Okay, so uh, now I've taken my transfer completely off. So that was really easy, you guys. I was able to do all of the transfers I had in here. And it took me, I don't know, like a half an hour. The only thing you have to be really careful of is don't overheat that wall. Um, and then I would just come, I wouldn't use clean wipes, but I'm just going to do it to show you guys. Uh, that uh, cleaner does leave a greasy residue on your wall. So before you come back and you're going to paint again, I want to make sure that I clean the wall to remove any cleaning residue from that wall. And then I'm going to rinse this with some water. You know, you're just throwing this stuff around like somebody else is going to clean it up. <laughs> I'm hoping they are. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to rinse that cleaning residue with some water. And now I feel like my wall is ready to accept paint. My transfer is removed, but that's how easily you guys can use transfers on your wall and feel comfortable but that they can come on and off and it's not a huge deal to remove them. You can also use that same process uh, to remove a transfer on furniture. It's the same thing though. You just gotta be really careful with that heat because it'll bubble your paint. So I'm gonna show you guys. I'm not gonna sit down again because Sean will kill me, right? Yeah, well, if you keep going up and down, up and down, yeah. <laughs> no, because it's a really small space, but I don't have a table or anything to put this on. So what if I work up here? Can you oh, see yeah, this? sure. I'd love to see you mess with my tile. <laughs> well, I'll be really careful. Yeah. Did you find that paint key? What? Oh, your hair is. Okay, so I want to redo the walls in this room. I want to change the color. This was a color I put up when we first moved in. It was actually paint that was left over from another one of the rooms in the house. I was rolling paint. I just kept rolling into this room. I'm going to shake this a little bit 
You wanna make sure your lid's on before you do this? <laughs> this is a gallon of paint. And this is one hour ceramic paint from Wiesel. I think you should shake it another five more minutes. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was awkward. So this is their one hour ceramic line. It's an interior wall paint. I'm gonna shake it a little bit more. I'm gonna stir it as well. Okay, one hour ceramic is an interior wall paint. It does dry with a matte sheen, but it is scrubbable. So it's a washable matte. It's okay to use in a bathroom. And um, I wanted to try this line because I will never tell you guys about something that I haven't used myself. And so what better way to actually talk about the one hour ceramic than to put it in my own house. Better be a good color. So this is the color I chose. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> this is called Restoration Gray. Renovation Gray. Sorry. Renovation Gray. It's a, it's a blue gray color. I'm going to ask you to do it, but each one, can you turn them around and show them the sample that I painted on the wall behind us? Okay, so this one? Okay. This little dinky. That little tiny This square. tiny. Just so you can see how it's going to dry, that it is darker than the color I've got on the wall right now. While he turns you guys around, I'm going to stir. We're going to go one at a time. Sorry. I'm going to stir this can of paint. I shook it pretty well, but I want to make sure that it's properly mixed. Um, it's nice and thick. And one hour ceramic is, like I said, it dries to a nice matte finish, but it's actually made with ceramic microspheres in it. Oh man. <laughs> I know this cracked me up because I talked on the phone with- Is this uh, going to the moon? Well, I was talking with Karen. All right, here we go, who's Facebook. One, you guys are gonna see how, how the paint dries. It actually dries a little bit darker than what's in the container. It looks the same color as my walls now, but it's actually darker. Oh, I agree. She's freaking me out too with the new tile job going on. <laughs> hey, it's, at least it's in the shower. You just turn the shower on, right? No, the paint dries. <laughs> well, well, then we're going to cut this line really short if I spill the paint. <laughs> it all goes down. <laughs> yeah, everything's going down all of a sudden. <laughs> okay, so I was talking on the phone with, uh, I was talking with uh, Karen, who's one of the owners from Wiseout, and she was like so emphatic about these ceramic spheres. Um, this is a great option oh, if you have walls that have a flaw in them. You're a flaw. Because it's matte paint, and matte paint does not reflect every movement of light. So if you had flaws in your walls, if your walls are wavy gravy, you know, whatever the problem with them is, what? and you're you want to kind of camouflage it, a matte paint will not reflect light and show all those. Whereas a gloss is going to reflect the light from every surface and you're gonna see that your <laughs> wall you. is imperfect. So we will see if Sean's wall is imperfect. Uh, what, what? So right now I'm cutting in and I don't tape off when I'm uh, cutting in. I've cut in this entire house. Sean did all the tile work. I did all the paint work. I always get those wrong. 3,500 square feet every surface, except he did spray the ceilings. Before I'll give you credit for in. the ceilings. Before we moved in, he sprayed the ceilings, so I didn't have to do that. Um, I'm going to show you guys some different tools for cutting in interior walls, though. Oh my God. I'm by no means a professional painter. I guess I kind of am, but what? Not, not a wall painter. Yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily a I did watch uh, this TikTok video the other day, and the guy was like, if you see your interior house painters come in to paint your house and they bust out a roll of painter's tape, you should be worried. I was like, that's a pretty good perspective. Okay, so when I cut in, I'm using an angled sash brush. This is a two-inch brush. This one's just one I got off Amazon. It's from, uh, the brand's called Rolling Dog. You can use your nice Klingon brushes too. Okay, so that's my two inch angled sash. And when I dip into my paint, I'm just dipping the tips of the bristles. So I'm, I, I didn't full on dunk my paintbrush into that bucket. It's too high, I can't reach up there without a stool, so I'm gonna come down. I know, you're gonna freak out. No, I'm enjoying it's not that. having a moderator. I was gonna ask you a question, but I'm gonna leave it alone. <laughs> About being in the shower? No, is it just the tip? <laughs> yes, yes it is. <laughs> <laughs> of your two inches, of your two inches, two, okay, two inches. <laughs> um, okay, so I gotta come.
them down low because I ran out of oh, stuff to paint up here. I know it's going to have to happen. You're going to have to get over, have to <laughs> get over it. <laughs> get over it. Get over yourself. All right. Do, 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 do. Somebody this. push the button on the elevator. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you guys some of my favorite tools for cutting in paint in, in the interior. All right, this is one tool you can use, and this is just a, a flat edge plastic painter's tool. These are in the painting department at your hardware store. And you can place this against your moldings, and you can just cut right in along this guy. So that's one. This guy. Okay, so that'll save you from having to cut in right there. That was really fast. The only thing when you're using one of these is you have to be careful that when you move it along, because it does pick up paint on the edge, that you keep this edge clean. Yeah, just don't put a load of paint in yeah, your brush. Yeah, don't overload your brush, and then make sure it's clean as you're moving it along your wall, or you're gonna take that paint and just slide it all along all the areas that you're trying to keep it from getting. So that's one tool. This guy is another one. Hey, just a quick question. You think you can use this over wallpaper? Uh, you could. I mean, I don't see why not. Now, anytime you're painting over wallpaper, you usually have to do some, some preparation, like make sure that it's not peeling, if the seams are visible. All that stuff, you guys, is still visible. I think it's all just hardcore prep work. It's still visible work. when you're painting. So that's just prep work. Just make sure your surface is flat. If you've got peeling areas, make sure they're re-adhered. Um, you know, all, all that. I would just make sure you're painting a nice surface. So this guy right here has little wheels on it, okay? And I'm going to actually put some of my paint in this um, tray. You get all down and dirty, and aren't you? Now that I've, so this is committing. Now I've got to paint my bathroom tonight. So after we get off, this is what I'll be doing. Sounds exciting. I'm gonna be outside. <laughs> I know it's super nice out today and I've got to paint my bathroom now. All right, so I'm just gonna clean off the rim. I'm just using a brush. If you've got one of those uh, gallon spouts, those are awesome too. But to use this little roller guy that I was just showing you, that I set some, oh, here it is. <laughs> I was like, I just set it down. All right, so this guy's got some strings on it. Obviously wouldn't want those. This is not a new one, but how it works is you can, um, you buy this, this plastic thing. It's got wheels on it. And then you can buy these little pad refills. These actually work pretty decently. Uh, I would throw these pads away every time. They're not worth trying to wash out and save. This is one I've washed out. It's not worth it, throw it away. But I'm gonna show it to you with this. And then you take this guy. This guy. And I would just fill it in my painter's tray, just like that. You wanna make sure that you don't get any paint on your wheels, okay? But then you can take this and you can even use a pole and I could roll the wheels along my ceiling or I could come here and I can just roll it along my tiled edge. Okay, so that's another option. These work pretty good. These are good for uh, short people like me because I can use a pole and I can roll those wheels along the ceiling um, and it, you put it on a on a pole and roll it along the ceiling and that works too. Um, again, just like with this tool here, you wanna make sure you don't get any paint on it as you're moving it. If you get paint on these wheels, you're gonna roll paint on the wheels the you whole way it. along your ceiling. If you're going like this, it's gonna roll that paint along your ceiling. So uh, same thing as that, that tool, you just make sure you're not carrying your paint where you don't want it. So that's another option. You can use any sort of flat edge, how I showed you guys with that um, painter's tool. This is just a scraper blade, but this will work similarly where I can place it along my molding, put my paint on there, and then I would just want to clean it every time. Don't carry that paint on. Make sure it's clean and dry. And then I can go along all my base moldings. So how do I like to do it? None of those ways. I'm going to just cut it in with a brush. Hey, you're showing me how I like to do it, though. The I other, like to have you do it. The other option is painter's tape, but I, I've done this whole house and I've not taped in one piece of molding. Um, it means I just hold my breath in a steady hand. And that's it. I just cut in. 
Okay, so now I've got a nice area cut in. I would continue going along my base moldings, but I'm gonna roll the rest of the wall. Okay, so let's talk rollers, paint rollers. This is, this is a regular paint roller. It's got some fuzzy nap on it. Um, anytime you're painting with one of these fuzzy paint rollers, you wanna use tape and remove, either, or either wash it out and allow it time to dry, or you wanna take like a lint roller or tape and try to get as much of the loose bits off of your roller as you possibly can. I'm these curious have, to see how much comes off. These have a lot. Whoops, I almost dropped it and I just broke my tape. These have a lot of loose hairs. I only ask because I've already done that. But it was good. To this one you did it? Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, you did a terrible job. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm pretty excited right now that you already did this for me. All right. So it's just like, it's like using a lip roller. I would take that and tack off as much of the little hairs off the paint roller as I can get. Um, another option is you can use either a foam roller or this is a um, flocked roller. I said flocked. <laughs> um, the flocked roller will leave less texture. The flocked or the foam roller will leave less roller texture. Uh, you guys can see right here, this is starting to dry. Can you see how much darker this paint color is going to be than what I currently have in here? So as it's going on, this is my totally wet paint here. That's crazy. Um, but it's going to dry to this much darker color here. So as I'm rolling, I just try to go over this edge that I cut in. Uh, you want to make sure you don't have any paint that's uh, kind of stacked up there so that you don't end up with um, you know, a thick cut in line. And then when I'm rolling my paint, I also, if you kind of do a W, or an M, depending on, <laughs> is it a W or an M? Okay, and then you come back and fill in your- How about an A or a C? No, unacceptable. Okay. Letter D. I'm just asking. D is for don't do it. <laughs> J for jerk for asking. <laughs> okay, so I'm just using my little flocked roller because I'm kind of just doing this small area. The larger roller would absolutely work fine, would get this wall done in more, t uh, in, uh, you know, faster than my little flocked roller, but because I'm in such a small space, this is working really good. Same thing down here. I'm going to overlap my cut in line just a little bit. As close as I can get without touching my moldings. Do my M oh, or W. Yeah, sure. I have four letters for you to paint. <laughs> Y-M-C-A. Oh, I thought it was going to be S-E-A-N. <laughs> no? No. Don't ever. <laughs> Don't ever sing not to that, that again. Not to that tune, please. <laughs> All right. You're going to so I it. know. I, I already know. <laughs> I got to stand up. I got like a one foot I, square I know, to stand look, there. I got this whole like corner done right here. It looks really nice. I yeah, it looks great. I love this color. And then you're going to just change it all up on me. Um, Let's I, go for a push elevator button. I chose this color because it pulls in the grays and the blues that are in the tile that we used in the shower. I have boys. This is a boys bathroom. So I try to kind of respect their decorating taste and not decorate in pink. Oh, thank you. All right, let's talk about these areas here. Uh, I had hooks in the wall. I'm gonna put hooks back up in the wall for towels. Um, but I wasn't sure which hooks I wanted to put up. So I did patch the wall and then these have been primed. I don't have it in here. It's not in here. Okay, no. I just used Zinser. I don't have a lot of room. One, two, three, primer. Anytime you use a patch on the wall, you want to prime it before you put a paint over it. Uh, that recommendation comes from our contractor when he built. He said, whatever you do, don't come into this house and just put the paint on without priming the drywall first because it was all brand new drywall. Um, Is this uh, basically one coat coverage? I, I, I would still do two coats. Like where I put it over, I'm getting really good coverage, but consider this my background color is is really similar it's still a blue gray but where I put it over the white I'm gonna need two coats I can see right here 
that I'm gonna need two coats on that. Yeah, that's gonna need two coats. Where it's going over my existing wall cover, I'm pretty good. I could probably do one coat coverage on that, but I'm still gonna do two on my full wall. Um, okay, let's talk, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about what I intend to do in here after this is dry. All right, I've got a couple ideas. You had to bring your water in here too, didn't you? No, it's hot in here. I'm ready to turn the, can you turn the bathroom fan on? <laughs> Okay. Woo. Um, number one, I, I do want to put hooks back on this wall. So I have a couple ideas for different types of hooks. Oh, Let me show you guys what I trying. have. Are we getting mad at you? No, I'm just trying to get you good shots. And... I know. Well, I mean, you guys don't, don't hang out in the bathroom with Sean. Okay. So a couple ideas for hooks. So these guys are, are a deer. I have three of them. So that it would go one, two, three. Um, I like these. I really like these, except that this is a kid's bathroom and they would have to get their towel on that little hook. Are those deer? Uh, buck. Okay. Yeah, is that, is that an acceptable term? Not My terminology really. Only because it, from a distance, it looks like those, uh, what are those rabbits with the... No, the oh, like a mean. jackalope? Yeah, jackalope. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those are super big, <laughs> super big sellers are the jackalope hooks. <laughs> Okay, so uh, anybody. Okay, the reason I would choose deer, we live uh, kind of semi-rural. We're on five acres. There, we have deer everywhere on our property. Our whole neighborhood, the street names are deer names, like Velvet Horn, White Tail, Buck Horn. They're all named for deer. Uh, our neighborhood has a deer name, so everything is deer themed in our area. So I kind of like these guys, but I know with this little hook that my kids' towels are always going to be on the floor. Or they would hang it from the antlers and you'd never see the deer. Yeah, isn't that kind of weird? That who the hook is so small? No, who designed the antlers to where they come together in the middle like that? I don't know. I'll make a phone call. This I'll is call. ridiculous. I'll let them know. This is Okay, so that's way option unacceptable. A. Option B is more of a standard hook. Okay, that's just kind of, but I feel like boring, like that's not exciting at all. And then I have these deer hook that I kind of like. And um, and I would do three of these and each one has two hooks on it. So they just have to get their towels roughly onto the antlers in the general direction of the wall. And it should hit an antler, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then I'm thinking I would use decor like this guy here would go, and I would do kind of like glam. I I still I still think you should be in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> like with you or or on his own? Just me and my buddy. <laughs> yeah. So so kind of the silver and the gold, but in kind of a rustic decor, kind of like that. Um. Again, keeping that this is a boys' bathroom in mind. But what do I want to do on my wall? I want to do this. Little ponies and... Yeah, my little pony. My little pony. Here, can you see that? <laughs> okay, this is a stencil. This one's from Royal I can, Design. I can see that though. You can't see that? I can see that when you put it over there. Oh, you can't, okay. Yes. So it's wet paint, so I don't want to touch my wall. But I want to finish rolling this. It's going to dry to that matte sheen. I want to take a gloss. Oh, if only, I don't like it being a matching, more like a Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to get some new dad jokes. I agree. Every week people tune in horrible. for these. And... All right, ladies, throw them out there. All right, so I would take my uh, stencil and I'm going to take a flock roller like this and I'm just going to roll a gloss clear coat. And then this is going to show in a gloss against the matte background of the paint. So I had a couple stencils, but I kind of feel like, uh, do you want to put that other one up the stairs? I know it's a long way, <laughs> like right around the corner. I had a couple stencils, but I'm leaning towards this one. I think it would be pretty with the deer before. Here, I found this at the jerk store. <laughs> <laughs> that's, where you, that's where you shop for your stencils. <laughs> this is actually a wall stencil and it's massive. I could do this in like two placements. I would do my whole wall. But this was my second choice. I feel like it's a little maybe too Americana I think that's, though. That's a little too much. Yeah, it's a little too much. It's a boys bathroom. So I think this would be, 
I don't know. I wanted to grow up with my boys and not be too, not be too girly. So those were kind of the choices yeah, I was looking take at. That. Take that. If I wanted to put a transfer back on the wall, that was another choice. And actually, I'll, I'm going to tell you guys, my kids really were sad I took the birds down. I thought they wouldn't care at all, but they kind of were upset about it. So this is my other choice, is I replaced the birds, only I wouldn't have anything else to match with them in the whole bathroom. It would just be the birds, whereas before it was on the shower curtain. So I don't know. Zeta, it's okay. We can talk as much as we like. Yeah, we want to talk. More talking, we're less talking, more work. Hey, you know what, you guys? Like, when you were in college, did you listen to your teachers talk? This is a class. It's a class. So, we showed, we talk. There's talking that goes into teaching. All right, so I can't reach up there. I'm going to move this direction. And I'll continue painting my wall because I'm going to get this all done tonight. Yes. I love the color that this is drying. It has a little bit of a green undertone in it. Oh, the birds. Have you guys like the birds? I know it was really cute. I really liked having them. I up. do like the big one, but it's a boy's bathroom. Well, um, I do feel like my kids are going to get older and then they're going to be less tolerant of the birds in the bathroom. Well, I'm glad that you feel like they're going to get older because they will. <laughs> like my oldest is 14, but my youngest is only eight. And so now watch, I'm going to come down and then you're going to go up. <laughs> yeah. All right. I told you guys I was going to cut in this bathroom, not using any tools. So I'm going to come in here. I, I'd like to be on the other side because I'm right handed and this goes backwards. But I get, I gotta get my face down in here. And I can't talk while I'm doing it. Nobody's watching, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. Ah, a chew. So thankfully there, I mean, there's really not a whole lot of cutting in in this bathroom to do. So I cut in and I roll. Bathrooms are fun because I feel like in bathrooms there's smaller space so you can actually get a little more adventurous with your decor. Um, I like to do, you know, darker decor in a bathroom than I normally would, more bold color. Um, we had our, literally a fluorescent green bathroom in our last house. Oh yeah, the monkey with bathroom. The, with the monkey decor. It was really cute. It was like a jungle green. And my kids called it the, the monkey bathroom. That was the monkey bathroom in our house for forever. You know, it would be like, I need to take a shower. Okay, go in the monkey bathroom. See, here you go. I know. <laughs> I'm backing you out of the whole room. Okay. So this gets really good coverage. I, um, our master bathroom has a matte paint in it, and I love the sheen of it. Our master bathroom is actually a really dark, 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 almost black like a charcoal color and it's gorgeous it's dramatic and then i have charcoal and gold wallpaper in there i thought about putting wallpaper in here except that we have two people in our house that like to take uh showers that are the temperature of the fires of who are those people h-e-w the hockey sticks yeah yeah. Like, yeah yeah we have two people me and my older son, if, the, if our if our skin is not lightly blistered, off. Yeah, then the shower is not hot enough. So I don't think that wallpaper would wear very well in this in this house. I had the cutest wallpaper. It had owls on it. So I'm actually so I'll, I'll use that on a piece. Oh, of we're room. going we're going down there again. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of doing sideways M's. What letter is that? That's an equal sign. <laughs> I'm kind of doing it sideways. Equals a good time. <laughs> and now I'll do my... Exclamation point? Yeah, because <laughs> I'm running out of room in my bathroom. I'll need to get a stool or a ladder to do up high closer to the ceiling. Or a Sean. <laughs> um, like I said, I will end up doing two coats on this, but depending on what color your wall color is, where I have this other color underneath, the coverage is gorgeous. 
So I actually think that I'm going to save the stencil with you guys and we'll do that part together next week because I know you're going to want to see that part too. Um, and I'll do, I'll do the stencil with you guys on camera too so you can see stenciling on the wall and what that process is going to look like. We're talking down low. Just, just one <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I need to get the wall painted too and there was no way that I could um, paint it and stencil in the same night. So dry time. So you guys, I'm going to go ahead and get off, but uh, this was one hour ceramic from Wiesel Paint. The color is called Renovation Gray. Um, it actually has blue undertones almost to green in my interior lighting. I dig it. I like it. Yeah, I really like it. It's really pretty. Um, if I have enough of this, I'd like to do my other son's bathroom too. So they're the same color. He has the same tile in his bathroom. So too. the question was if we're going to paint the ceiling the same color, that would be a no. No, the ceiling it's... will be white. All our ceilings and our moldings are all painted white. I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, I'm traumatized. I hope my mom's not watching, but my mom, when I was a kid, oh. guys, my Sorry. mom would paint rooms in our house and she would paint everything. I'm not kidding you. Light switches, outlets. Uh, like they would stay intact. There's no cutting in. It Wind just was windows, like light fixtures. Everything got the paint on it, and I was like, <gasps> but my mom always did that. So sorry, mom, if you're watching. I do remember in my sister's room that they had everything was painted. And look what happened. It bugged yeah. you so much. You're gonna do. Now I I can't. I've got to I've got to cut it all in. So I I like a white ceiling, especially in the bathroom. All right. So I'm gonna pull away. Can you stand up? I'm just gonna show the shower. Yeah. But. Okay. You want me to stand up in, in the shower? No. Like this? No. Well. Okay, so this is uh, this is the tile work that Sean did. This bathroom is underneath our staircase. Which is why it has a 45. So it has an angle to the wall because our staircase is going up over this. Um, the shower glass will come to about here. Yeah, roughly. Okay, so that's, oh here, you got me still on the tape up. Yeah. Um, so that's why we had to take the shower curtain down. That's why the birds came out. I had a bird shower curtain. It went with the birds on the wall. But now this is going to be all glass so you can see the tile work. I chose white subway tile with a bevel in it. It's clean. It's yeah. classic. It's hard to go wrong. It's got dark grout so you can't mess the grout up. Um, it's got blue and gray. It's my accent tile because I have boys and we have gray vanities in our bathrooms. Um, so that's kind of our direction. So I think um, if you guys stick with me and next week come back and we will stay working in this room so you guys can see the project come together and we'll stencil the wall next week. I'll show you guys how I put this design on. I'm just going to do this one wall as a feature. I'm not going to do every wall in the bathroom. Just this one wall as a feature wall with this guy here and my hooks. So what do you guys think? That's all right. Yeah? You're not... Not too pumped about it. Well, I Sorry, Instagram's totally getting your head cut off and going down. Alright, you want to go down here? Yeah, can you just please All right. make, make it I, easy. I love how the paint is drying. I love the sheen of it. <clears throat> I love how it catches the light. It's super soft. It's not like your regular matte paint where it's very dry and kind of, um, yeah, dry, like chalky feeling. Matte paint when you, you know, just your regular flat wall paint that you would get at the hardware store. It's super soft, like a, uh, it doesn't have sheen on it. You're waiting? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to let you just go. It, it doesn't have a sheen on it, but it's got this like buttery, smooth, soft texture. It's like, um, it's like a soft suede almost, but it doesn't have a texture to it. It's just that, like when you rub your hand over it, how it feels super soft like that. Why ruin it by putting the hooks on? I'll just, you know, lean up against the wall and... If it feels so nice. Is this your stud finder joke again? Because I love that one too. Yeah, those don't get old. Yeah, I'm leaning towards I'm leaning towards the um, gold antler hooks, which was these guys here. That's really pretty against that wall color too with the gold. But I'm gonna do the decor in here will be all silver and gold. That way I have silver fixtures in here. I so Mary does wonder metal. as far as this paint in a bathroom, yeah. how it would work. It is approved for use with use in a bathroom. So I did check on that to make sure and it will hold up to the moisture. It's a scrubbable flat. So even though it doesn't have a sheen on it, uh, it, it is rated to be scrubbable. So uh, the other thing that's cool about this paint, 
you can order it from Wise Owl in any color. So if you go into your Sherwin-Williams store or your hardware store and you find a color that you love, but you want to try the one hour ceramic, you can, um, you can order it to be color matched to your hardware store colors. You have to send them the color that you want and they will color match it. You can also order samples of it. So if you just want to do, you can order a little sample. I think they're four ounce size, which is a little jar. And if you just want to do a square to make sure you like the color, I kind of winged it. I just saw the color and I was like, I'm just going to go for it. I like blue grays. Let's do it. But you can order sample sizes and put a little sample up on your wall before you, um, before you actually paint your wall. So it comes in a variety of the Wiesel colors, a whole bunch of them, whites, grays. You know, there's an orangey color in there, beautiful colors, black, blue. Again, recap, paint you're using. So I, this is one hour ceramic from Wiesel and the color is called Renovation Gray. And flat? It's an interior matte. wall paint with a matte finish. So it dries to a matte finish. No. Okay, so it's, I'm going to read the back of it to you. It says, one hour ceramic luxury interior paint formulated with ceramic technology for durability. One hour ceramic is 100% acrylic matte wall paint formulated with ceramic microspheres that offer superior stain resistant properties. Fingerprints, soil, grease, and many other stains wash off with mild soap and water without harming the film. Recommended for interior walls and ceilings, spatter resistant, unparalleled coverage and washability. Okay, that's the back of the container. So that's, those were all the qualities that made me comfortable with choosing this to put it in a bathroom. Um, like I said, I also will never recommend to you guys something that I haven't actually used myself. So this lets me put it on a wall. I can feel it. I can touch it. Um, I can watch it wear. Um, and that's like, uh, as I'm going through trying new paint brands and new paint products, it's important to me to use them. So if I haven't used them, I can't talk to you guys about them. So I'm putting this on a wall in my own house and I'm going to let it wear with my three kids. I, I've done this with all the products I use. I use them in my own home and I won't ever recommend to you guys something that I would not use in my own home. You'll notice those are just products that I let go by the wayside and I never try them. But this is something a lot of paint brands are coming out right now with luxury interior paints. And I wanted to try it. I wanted to, to be able to speak to you guys on it. So, so that's kind of what we're doing. All right, you guys, so I'm going to let you guys go tonight. If you come back, we're going to stencil the wall next week. I will show you guys how we put up a wall stencil. You'll get to see that light, subtle contrast in the sheen and what that looks like um, on this wall. And um, so you guys, I put a link above in the post. You guys check out One Hour Ceramic. I have a video coming out on my YouTube channel tomorrow. Um, it's going to be, it's that beautiful purple piece I posted this week. I entered it into a contest. So it meant the piece went up before I had the video ready because I needed to enter um, and I, did, I didn't have time to edit beforehand. So I got all my editing done. That video goes up tomorrow. It's a spectacular piece. It's actually for my sister. Uh, she's having a baby and it's going to be in her nursery. So check out my YouTube channel, Brush by Brandy, and that video will go up for you guys tomorrow. I'll let you guys go. You guys have a spectacular weekend. Thank you.